gentlemen, it's your boy Beast Gamer Puma here with the Capcom next summer 2024. That's right, we're gonna check out what Capcom has in store for us because honestly, I'm not really expecting much. There was already some pre information, not really talking about anything I want to hear, like Monster Hunter Wilds and stuff like that. But we're gonna report on this, we're gonna check it out to see if it's worthwhile. So, as always, hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Also, check out my Patreon page, it's in the link in the description below. And let's get into this. Right, let's see what we got here. Capcom Next Summer 2024. Hello, let's everyone. See what's going on. Welcome to Capcom Next Pizza Summer 2024. Today, we'll be giving updates on three titles. Dead Rising is back from the dead with a deluxe remaster. Check out this and other games from Capcom this, game, this summer. I'm looking forward to. But first, we'd and like to tell so you dumb. about this title. This looks so cool. That's a big gun. Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess will launch on July 19th, 2024. Now we got a free loaded too. We're excited for you to immerse yourself in the unique Japanese inspired setting. The innovative gameplay combines elements of both action and strategy games. Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is set on Mount Kafuku, which yeah. has been covered by defilement. When the sun sets, the sinister seeth emerge to attack the mountain. During the day, you'll explore the villages. Help fix the broken contraptions and purify the villagers. Then you'll be able to give the villagers roles and choose where to place them. Not bad. It's critical to use your daylight time wisely. The game will test the player's decision-making abilities. During the night phase, the sea attack the villages. Fight with the protagonist So's graceful sword attacks. Issue that looks pretty. I ain't gonna lie. That looks really pretty. Protect the maiden Yoshino. The player repeats this day-night cycle and purifies villages with Yoshino to bring peace back to the mountain. Okay, I see how the it works. The attack the villages in many different forms. Getting help from the villagers is essential to make it through the wide array of challenges presented. Oh, Upgrade like villager roles to please. give yourself more support. Oh. You can freely reset upgrades and redistribute them to other roles. Customize the roles however you want. You'll also be able to upgrade so as you play through the game. Not bad. Upgrade attacks, unlock archery, I mean, look pretty. and use skills to summon the villagers. That at all. There really are a variety of elements that can be upgraded. Combine So's upgrades with abilities from Tsuba Guards and Mazo Talismans. Expand the strategies and actions the player can take. Work effectively with the villagers and guide Yoshiro as you purify the villages. So it has a strategy. Okay, well, I mean... Next, okay. take a look at this. Oh, that's gonna be a demo! Nice! Oh, sweet. I'm gonna have to try that out. I'm gonna have to try that out. So much going on this week for July to start off. That is not bad at all. The demo version will be available from today. You can play part of the main story in a demo version, and there's no limit on playtime or the number of times you can play. Oh, no limit. Okay, okay. We're excited for you to experience this unique combination of action and strategy. We also have a new announcement. Oh, 
Oh, oh, I saw that coming. I saw it coming. It had to. It had to. To celebrate the demo version, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess will have a collaboration with the 2006 action-adventure hit, Okami. Not collaboration bad. costumes for the main character, So, and the maiden, Yoshiro. There will be collaboration weapons, and we have collaboration music in the game as well. Oh, music. In order wow. to celebrate the Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess demo, we are having a special festival. Okay, to the 17th, that's not bad. It's One of the themes of Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is working with others to achieve a goal. If enough players work together and try the demo version, we will include the Okami collaboration items as a free title update on Yo, release day for everyone who incentive. purchases a copy of the game. That is a great incentive, not bad. For details, please see our website and social media accounts. Into that. That's actually a good incentive for, you know, to give people to play the demo. Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is available for pre-order. The Mazo Talismans for So and a mini art book are included as pre-order bonuses. Check out the demo version, available today. Definitely going to check out the demo, definitely. Okay, July 19th, pre-order now. I think it's going to be available on Game Pass too, so that's actually pretty cool. Next up, a new look for some fan favorites. Want the inside scoop on the recently revealed Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster? We've put together an exclusive top secret program full of undead mayhem. Join us as we sit down with key development team members from each title to unearth the secrets of Dead Rising and the new look for Resident Evil 7. First, take a look new at the trailer. Look for Resident Evil 7, that's quite interesting. What new look? What are y'all about to do? What are y'all what, what cooking up here? What is they cooking up? Say, buddy, you mentioned something about research for a story. Frank West. Remember that name, because the whole world's going to know it's it in Frank three West days. Frank West, again. <laughs> I heard they changed the voice actor, though. Why not just come out with a new one? Oh. What? Need us just like, oh. Did you just say zombies? Take a look out there. Those ain't zombies. What would you call them? just witnessed is the newly released trailer for Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. You may be thinking, that looks like a full-on remake. We had the same thought, so we spoke with three key staff to get to the bottom of this Deluxe Remaster. We began our investigation remake. with director Ryosuke Murai. Well, actually, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to call this game a remake, considering the work we put into it. Before we could even ask a question, Murai was giving us the inside scoop about the game. The first thing you'll notice is the improved graphics. The new specs allow the game to run at 4K 60fps. We've also made quite a few quality of life improvements, like the ability to move while aiming, as well as other adjustments to make controlling Frank more intuitive. Thanks to popular demand, we've added an autosave feature and fine-tuned the user interface. The game will That's be fully be fun voiced in nine languages, with text in 14, 
giving more players around the world a chance to enjoy characters' dialogue. We've also made some improvements to NPC behavior that we hope will make surviving the zombie apocalypse with all the colorful characters. Yeah, I feel that like the NPCs could have been enjoyable. a lot better to survive versus just, you know, always that having sounds the same like a butts. complete overhaul. It makes me wonder if the game's main concept is still intact. If you've played the original, rest assured that its core remains unchanged in this deluxe remaster. We did our best to respect the direction of the original game. We kept the fundamental gameplay the same while improving upon the user experience. With this, we believe that both veterans and newcomers alike will be able to enjoy a fresh experience. Our goal was to ensure that today's players would experience the same shock players felt when the original game was released. We believe we accomplished this goal with Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. We hope that everyone will give it a try. Unable to get any definitive answers out of director Murai, we gave art director Satoshi Takamatsu the third degree. It turns out he had ambitions of his own for this project. Because the original came out 18 years ago, there were many limitations during development. Thanks to nearly two decades of technological advancements, we were able to accomplish a lot that couldn't be done back then. For example, Resident Evil, Capcom's other zombie franchise, focused on quality over quantity. Dead Rising took a different approach. The goal was to pack as many zombies as possible into that huge shopping mall. This meant each individual so zombie how many gigs wasn't as polished be now. as we would have liked. However, this time around, we were able to focus on quality as well. As the art director, I couldn't be more pleased it's not too bad. that we were able to apply high-end modeling and production to both the main character, Frank, and all of the NPCs. Of course, another critical aspect of Dead Rising that we have to address is the shopping mall setting. In the original game, the Willamette Parkview Mall is made up of several areas, like Entrance Plaza and Paradise Plaza, each I'm with its own unique put in a lot of work in this whole environment, especially being that everything can be used as a and weapon. That's them crazy. Even further by adding kind of feels like Yakuza in a way. Shadow effects. I wonder if they took so the inspiration from that because in Yakuza you can use every type of weapon in the, the environment to use for, uh, you know, against enemies. Well, not every type, but you can pick up signs, That's bikes, stuff like that. how much detail we've put into this project. Definitely more lively, I'm not gonna lie. For character animations, we tried to limit unnecessary changes and use the original data as much as possible, especially during action scenes. We could have made them more realistic with today's tools, but we wanted to preserve the unique <laughs> and comical funny. movements uh, it's going to have that a lot made of the original comedy, Dead Rising so special. They really amped up the physics for the falling. Takamatsu was finally giving us the info we were looking for. However, we couldn't stop there. We had to know why this is called a deluxe remaster. To do that, we tracked down the game's producer and managed to get his account. I think Dead Rising is a unique game with extremely tight game design, even by today's standards. However, we also knew the original game was released 18 years ago and that improvements were needed to reach a modern audience. That's why we focused on improving playability in addition to overhauling the graphics. This game truly deserves the title of Deluxe Remaster. Its unique game design allows it to stand apart from other zombie games. It feels fresh even today. Morimoto took a moment to compose himself before divulging something terrifying. Here at Capcom, we're no strangers to zombies. But this game that was dark takes so it to man, another level. You can't be Dark Souls, man. Come on With now. a wry smile on his face, Morimoto took out his phone and showed it to us. And there it was, Resident Evil 7, in a form we never imagined. 
Capcom is thrilled to bring its third Resident Evil title to the iPhone 15 Pro and other Apple devices. The game has been optimized greater than ever before to ensure the best possible RE experience. As with Resident Evil Village and RE4, using a controller like the DualSense or a mobile controller that attaches directly to the phone allows for a surprisingly comfortable gameplay experience. That being said, when playing on a mobile device without a controller, we felt the standard virtual controller just didn't cut it. So the development yeah, team took it upon well, themselves to, to optimize the touch controls for Resident Evil 7 on iOS. One of the biggest challenges we faced was implementing the auto fire feature. You can enable this setting so that your weapon fires automatically when aiming at an enemy, making it much easier to play without the use of peripherals. The early That's Resident Evil cool. games also had auto aiming. Despite the differences in specs, Morimoto wasn't willing to compromise on usability. With Apple's help, he was able to take on new challenges that prioritize the immersive experience. The menu, options, and inventory are now all touchscreen compatible, allowing for a more intuitive experience. The first That's part of the game is not, free to play. not too bad. Resident Evil 7 is guaranteed to be frightful fun. If you have a compatible device, we highly recommend checking it out to see what you think. Since its release in 2017, Resident Evil 7 has sold 13 million copies. Now it's available in a new form on Apple devices. Up next, a confession from Koshi Nakanishi, the director behind the classic. Resident Evil was, well, if I'm being honest, as a brand, we were off track. And legendary director Yoshinori Kawano discloses the secret origin of Dead Rising. I feel like Dead Rising is the classic zombie game. In the second half of the program, we'll learn previously untold stories about how the games were developed. Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster will have an okay. emergency digital launch this for PlayStation out 5, even Xbox, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Steam on September 19th. So you're telling me they're coming out with an Xbox Series Steam version, but they're coming out with Capcom Final Collection. The Dead Rising Deluxe Remastered Digital Deluxe Edition will include additional costumes and mall background music and will be available with like the Nemesis regular version right on September 19th. And Red Dead Redemption, no, that's rock on. Dead Rising Wait, fans few... shouldn't miss the Dead Rising original was a few pack included as a pre-order bonus. Pre-orders are available starting today. Eh, not really for me, but I can see people's appeal towards it. Welcome to the family, son. My boy Nick Monty would like this. He'll definitely play a horror game like Resident Evil. Gift that song. I should do that. How did Capcom's two major zombie games, Dead Rising and Resident Evil 7, come to be made in the first place? We interviewed the directors of both titles to learn more about the games. First, we have Koshi Nakanishi, the distinguished director of Resident Evil 7. Follow along as he shares previously undisclosed information about the game's origin. When we first started development, Resident Evil was... Well, if I'm being honest, as a brand, we were off track. The action element had been expanded, and fans reacted much more negatively than expected. I had a long day work, so if I'm filming, if I look sleepy, this is an weird. RE game has to be scary. Woo! So we took another look at it, and the general consensus from fans of the series was that a Resident Evil game is one that should scare the hell out of you. That was the starting point for Resident Evil 7. I played Resident Evil from the beginning, and those early games were terrifying. I was excited to try and make Resident Evil 7 into a game that would live up to the RE name. The fear-inducing Resident Evil that Nakanishi was after had a major impact upon its release. But the course that he chose was far from the path of least resistance. In order to make a fear-focused Resident Evil, many elements of the game had to be re-evaluated from scratch. 
like the setting, characters, the game system. Anything that didn't induce fear had to change. And sometimes we threw the whole thing out. And in order to make it scarier, we decided to go with a first person point of view. Up to that point, RE had been third person perspective with the character on the screen. But when you're not viewing the world from a safe take distance much behind time a character, these versions because I mean, it's not as immersive and frightening. First yeah, I'm not going to say that everybody has played Resident Evil games, personal. but you know, it's like... Mm. And that's exactly what we were trying to accomplish. How did Kawano perceive the target audience for this game? We weren't sure whether to target a casual or core audience. However, we trusted management's concepts and made what we thought would be fun. Kawano had a range of experience directing Mega Man Legends and Breath of Fire, and he was confident in this new genre. We wanted to put the main character somewhere that was overrun with zombies. Most games might ordinarily make their main character a cop or a soldier. A badass, decked out in gear, ready for the situation. But we thought going in that direction would dilute the madness and unpredictability of the zombie outbreak. Sorry guys, you're losing me a little bit right here. Like, like, really need to talk so, this. we made him a journalist. Ugh. We focused the story on him being trapped in a place oh. full of zombies, trying to escape, and rescuing survivors along the way, so that they can all make it out together. To be clear, I'm not knocking these Kawano games just that, okay. During development. If somebody has it's been through this stuff that he still has already, the same it's just like, the yeah, he did a nice showcase on Dead Rising in terms Deluxe of the Edition. Narrative. There's a zombie Resident outbreak. Evil coming to iOS the player to and stuff like that, but I'm like, trying to escape and games. others who have become a bit people are anticipating too, like, making them feel like they're trapped in the outbreak. Well, just, I don't know. On the development team, we all felt like it was a fun game, but others who saw the game were kind of taken aback. Some even asked whether it was okay to make a game that was so violent. For a second, we started to doubt ourselves. Such an innovative project was bound to grapple with internal friction. But Kawano had a trump card to play, fan expectations. We previewed it at a game show and got mobbed. Players loved that you could use a parasol to kill zombies or put buckets on their heads. That's when I knew we'd done it. I still can't say whether it was targeting core or casual players, but everyone loves zombies, and being able to mess around with them in so many ways. I thought people in Japan and abroad would all like the game. However, RE4, a game without zombies, was released the year before. Was Dead Rising trying to dethrone the RE franchise? I think that makes Dead Rising one of the classics. Also, I think anything with zombies needs a sense of humor. A zombie outbreak is a disaster, but I think you need to laugh too. If there are laughs, you can have some tears as well. Resident Evil, on the other hand, is cooler. The main characters are very cool. Okay, I can agree with him there because the best thing about Dead Rising is the fact that you can be as goofy as you was want. Evident put on his Lego head, play as Mega Man. You do all sorts of open world stuff and Resident Evil games, use your imagination so to take out zombies. It's actually pretty cool. Giant dolls I'll give him that. appear and walk around. But I think we really filled Dead Rising with a ton of ridiculous stuff. <laughs> That's goofy. I like that. If you're looking for a clear answer to that question, that question. in oh, the hey, context it's funny. of this program, oh, hey, I think girl. it's fair to say that Dead Rising is the classic zombie game. A lot of people played the game when it first came out, but it wasn't the easiest to play. Now that it's been made a little more accessible, I'm excited for those who didn't play or couldn't finish to have another chance. Each of the directors had different experiences, but we'd like to salute both for their innovative contributions. And finally, 
we managed to draw out an intriguing bit of information from director Nakanishi. We'll let him have the final comment. We're making a new Resident Evil. It was really difficult to figure out what to do after 7. But I found it. And to be honest, it feels substantial. I can't share any details just yet, but I hope you're excited for the day I can. Here's a quick roundup of the games we introduced today that will be launching soon. Oh my god. Kunitsugami. Kunitsugami. Launches on July 19th. Kunitsugami looks freaking awesome. I'm looking forward to this game. Let's get it done. And then they're going to talk about the Resident Evil. Kevin Bala has it on iPhone, iPad, and Mac, which is cool for Mac players. Let them have that jump off. And plus, Finally, Dead Rising, years after the original release, making a comeback for the original Zombie Paradise a Deluxe Edition game. remake, Dead remaster, Deluxe whatever remaster. you want to call it, looks good. This is more than definitely good for remaster. new people, but this I wouldn't mind if they could have just made a new Dead excited. Rising game. I know they tried Kunitsu to make a new Dead Rising game, but Dead Rising 3 and didn't do well, but see what you get with this and capitalize on that. Make it a new area, make it in a different country. Who knows? That's all we you don't have, have to do a mall aspect. Thanks you can for just watching. make it an open world city or something of that nature. But who knows? That's enough. Okay, so the last thing they talked about was there's a free, there's a two hour trial right now for Dragon's Dogma 2 that you can try out. But honestly, the Capcom summer, Capcom next summer 2024, I didn't hate it. I just was just like, that was too much talking on the zombies. And then they got my feelings on showing off some Darkstalkers characters. Like, even with the Dead Rising Deluxe, what is it, Deluxe Remaster Remake or whatever, they showed some costumes and few of the uh, Darkstalkers own costumes. So I'm just like, why the hell are you doing that? Bring back Darkstalkers. Please, have somebody work on it. Arc System Works. Talk to Capcom. Make Darkstalkers. That would be great for y'all. Your anime engine would be freaking phenomenal for Darkstalkers. That's just me saying that. But again, Capcom next. Didn't hate it. I was very hyped for the first game, Unitsu Gama, Gami, which is having a demo right now. And I definitely like how the fact that they're going to be implementing a free option if enough people play the demo. So I'm going to hop on that and try that out. But uh, other than that, yeah, um, eh, it was I. I wanted to hear more about Monster Hunter Wilds, but maybe that'll be later on this year at the Tokyo Game Show or gamescom so we'll see more maybe a demo will be announced because monster hunter wilds is not a schedule until next year and usually they are good with giving us a demo so but let me hear your thoughts on what you thought about the capcom next 2024 summer 2024 comment below let me know what's good and let's talk about it other than that as always be out. <laughs>